and thanks for joining me. I'm Jess Ball, the Director of Education at Innovate Entrepreneurship and Humanitarianism in Medicine. And this week I want to speak a little bit about North Carolina and the Supreme Court. This week, North Carolina Governor Pat McCrory asked the Supreme Court to freeze parts of a Fourth Circuit Federal Court of Appeals opinion that strikes down several key provisions in an election law that was passed in North Carolina, holding that the law was enacted with discriminatory intent. These laws would directly affect the federal elections that would be going on and would change the way that the election was supposed to take place. The state, as it stands, is currently looking for a stay on only a few of the provisions that were struck down, but specifically they are looking for stays on provisions including voter ID and a reduction in early voting. This request to the Supreme Court is based on the idea that several other states aside from North Carolina have similar voter ID laws in place. However, in 2014, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Justice Richard Posner made statements on Texas's voter ID laws, calling them an unconstitutional poll tax and tying them back to the old Jim Crow segregation laws. As the number currently stands, about 20 million adults, or about 10% of eligible voters, do not have a driver's license, the primary form of ID used for voter ID. And these adults are disproportionately black and Latino but also include groups of seniors and students. The Federal Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court, of course, both exist to ensure that laws are maintained within the Constitution and are in keeping with the spirit and the law of the Constitution. And their purpose is to manage a legislature and ensure that legislation is both fair and well enacted. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please like it at the bottom, as well as subscribe to our channel for more. Once again, I'm Jess Ball, the Director of Education at Innovate Entrepreneurship and Humanitarianism in Medicine, and thanks for joining me.